Hey guys, I want to show you how we put the mortar in the joints. Uh, we call it pooping in the joints because that does kind of remind you. Anyways, uh, what we've done, we've set all of our stones with the thin set on the wall like I've uh, described in other videos. This works with culture stone, anything you do, you're setting your stones on. Uh, I let them cure for a good day or two depending on the weather and then pull all the chips that were supporting them out, clean things up. Uh, if I'm outdoors, I like to take a hose and hose off all the dust, all the dust that's inside these joints, because we want that mortar to really stick in there uh, and let it dry. If you're indoors, I'll take an air hose with a cleaner tip and blast it out that way. Don't breathe while you're doing that or you will die. Uh, so once you've got it prepared like that, I'll do a little moment. In a moment, I'll show you the mixture because I did this for years and I'd get it and I'd get it to start to come out of the bag and then it wouldn't work. So at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how we mix our mortar that it's always creamy and it's always uh, running out of the bag. These, uh, this is the Marshalltown grout bags. I really like those better than some of the other ones. Some of them are more rubberized. But because they're rubberized, when you're squeezing, you, the rubber is absorbing some of your pressure. These kind of have that more of a stiff fabric. So you've loaded it, and then it's just a matter of pastry bagging it in there, working that joint. And you want to slightly overfill. There's a skill to this that takes time. You want to slightly overfill, but you don't want to smear it all over the space of the stone. There's a zillion different looks as far as the grout goes, whatever you're, uh, you're looking for, your customer's looking for, is what you provide. We usually, indoors, I recess it a little deeper. Outdoors, I'm really trying to protect this thing from the weather. I don't, the last thing I want is water to get in behind my stone. So I, uh, I, I fill it out a fair bit and then tool it off. Now, I didn't mention, and this is probably the most important thing, there are days you just plain can't do this. If the sun is beating on these stones and they're almost out to the touch, don't do it. It's just not going to work. The mortar has to cure slowly. Once the water has left the mortar, that's as strong as it's going to get. And you want that water to stay in the mortar for up to three days to get their, your strength. If it's a hot day and it's burning out in 15-20 minutes, you're just basically putting a slightly strong powder in the mortar joints. So this is a perfect day. It's kind of out overcast. We have sprayed this down with a hose before that kind of moistened up the back to a point that it's not going to super draw out the moisture. And on this weather, it's 70 some odd degrees, highest humidity. We're probably 25, 30 minutes. I'm going to go back here. Uh, in 25 or 30 minutes, it's like this. If you come in close, you'll see it's starting, like with pressure, it's starting to actually crumble a little bit. And depending on the look you're looking for, uh, that changes a little bit. But that's about the way I like it. I can still mold it, but it's not smushy. If it's smushy, when you touch that with a trowel, you're going to have it smear, and that looks heinous. So we're going to avoid that by timing it right. You also want to be thinking, don't just get all happy with the poop bag and get a mile of this stuff out and then back at the beginning it's already hard and it takes time to trowel this. You're not going to be able to get the uh, optimal moisture condition the whole way. So don't poop out more than you can trowel and you got every day it's a little bit different. So the next step, we call these our, our uh, tuck pointing trowels. I usually have two of them on me, one skinnier, one wider. Uh, for different uh, size joints. But the next step is to press in, which is doing an important thing here. It's actually molding the mortar side to side and making that more of a waterproof uh, connection. And then I'm kind of just beautifying it. I'm dragging that out to an even uh, raked joint. That I mean, it just, it just straight up takes time. So once you've got the joints pretty well tooled out the way you want them, it's still, there's one more stage, but it's still a little bit too wet to do the brushing stage. But if we go down here, we've kind of been working on this all morning here, so we have different stages laid out. Uh, 
If you go down here, this guy, it's, you know, it's barely brushable. It's pretty much dry, which is perfect because now you can brush the joint without, again, worrying about smearing onto that stone. Uh, this is a little whisk brush. I'll put this uh, in the links below there. Uh, I think it's called a tent whisk brush. Fits in the joint perfectly. Cleans up all the little oddball pieces that are hanging around. And it does a final job of smearing, if there's any smear left, of getting that nice packed joint against the stone so that you have a good watertight seal. All right, I'll just check out uh, how we mix that mortar next. So how do we mix the mortar that goes into the grout bag, that goes in the joints, and how do we make it smooth? That secret took me like three years to figure out. Because if you look up even on the QuickCrete website, they just say mix up the mortar, put it in the bag, squeeze it out. You mix it up, you put it in the bag, it's constipated. So that doesn't work. Sometimes it does. It depends on what, your, what the mixture is in your QuickCrete bag which varies all over the place. This isn't one type of mortar. This is whatever's the nearest uh, quarrying area where their quickcrete is making it. So some areas they're getting some really fine, cakey, uh, sand, light sand that does just squeeze through the bag wonderfully. Other places it's more granulized and the mixture of their uh, lime is slightly different and, and uh, Portland. So, what I have found with our bags of Quickcrete, I mean, this is your standard uh, type S masonry mortar mix. This is a mixture of, of sand and mortar, usually three parts sand to one part mortar. Uh, what I've found with ours is you have to sweeten it with an additional amount of type S mortar. The type S mortar itself you know, this is extremely fine powder. This is a combination of Portland cement and lime. That's what, that's what is eventually mixed in here. And we're increasing that ratio. I don't know, maybe closer to two to one. Two parts sand, one part mortar. Uh, but if you're gonna mix it up, I highly recommend. In fact, it's pretty much required. You, you're not gonna have much success mixing up uh, mortar bag mortar, stuff that you're going to try to squeeze through in a wheelbarrow. The likelihood of clumps in that situation and just the lack of complete breaking of the whole system is so high that you're not going to get what you want out of it. So what we do here is throw some water in the bottom of the bucket. I like to start with it a little bit wetter than I finish because it just makes the drilling or the mixing process easier. Hold your breath because cancer is in the air. We're dumping in, I'm gonna say it roughly, half of a five gallon bucket of pre-mixed mortar mix. And then the magic, and you've gotta, when you go to the quarry and you pick this, feel the outside of the bag. You don't want the clumps. The clumps getting in the end of your mortar bag makes you very sad. This is nice, smushy goodness. So in a half a bag, I'm giving it about two block trowels. Start with that, with whatever material, whatever mortar mix you get, and see how that works. From there, you're gonna wanna adjust accordingly. So, we're beating it up. Fortunately, if you've seen some of my other videos, I explained the polymetric mortar that we use to put the adhere the stone on, that it's thin veneer mortar. Uh, that, we're actually breaking polymers. This is a much more basic, simpler chemicals. All we need to do is add water and mix thoroughly. It's a little bit of a quicker process, but at the same time, if there's any clumps, even compression clumps, I'm breaking those up with this paddle bit. You'll see this is a, a sheetrock mortar mixer and uh, a Milwaukee Magnum. I'll put those links below. Those are my favorite for mixing mortar. This is crazy mix, crazy wet. You know, this is worthless in a, in a, as a final product. But I know I've got some creamy 
broken down material that I can work with. And now I'm gonna finish it off and get it pretty precise. And this really matters. If you get it too wet, then the mortar becomes very weak because the ratio now is so heavy on water. When the water leaves, it leaves a lot of voids behind in the finished mortar. If you get it too dry, it will not go through the bag. So it's kind of like a Goldilocks situation. Also, mortar does slake uh, somewhat within the first five or 10 minutes, depending on the weather. Oh, one thing I've got to mention. Keep your mortar in a shaded, cool place. If the sun's beating on that mortar, it's just going to cook the whole thing. Uh, and if you care about the color of your mortar joints, and you should, try to mix the largest batches you possibly can. That's going to keep consistency throughout. And if you transfer it, like say you do a, a full side of a wall, then when you make that turn, you can switch to a different mortar or even a different time of day. But you try to keep at least what you can visually see with one side as consistent as possible. So here's the mortar and here's the test. And I always do this before I send it up on the scaffolding to work with. Throw it in a bag. Throw it in a bag and give it the poop test. There it is. That's perfect. If that bound up instantly, add a little water. Uh, if it doesn't, if it uh, is pouring out too easily, add a little bit more mortar. And you want to get that kind of Goldilocks perfect, just like that. And that's a mixture. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. We've got a lot more videos on this channel about how to do all the masonry things that we have been doing for about 20 years. Thank you again, and please like, subscribe, and share with anybody else you think might be helped by it.